Today on The Wood Grafter, we're having our first look at the Axminster Trade AT260 SPT. That's a spiral planar thicknesser from Axminster. That sounds good. Stick around. Hi, and welcome to The Wood Grafter. I'm Andy Guile, and if this is your first time with us, thank you for joining us. And welcome. Here at The Wood Grafter, our mission is to inspire, educate and support you in your journey to becoming a better woodworker. We produce videos twice a week, every Tuesday and every Friday, and we look at things like tool reviews, tool setup, tool tips, videos like this one, as well as how to build things, step-by-step -step guides, and general conversations about the things that we want to know as woodworkers. So if that sounds good to you and you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing now give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything, and leave a comment, get in touch. With that said, let's get started. So, at long last, here it is. A great big wooden box from Axminster. And inside this box, we have the Trade Series AT260 SPT. This is obviously the Trade Class Planar Thicknesser for Axminster. This comes in three variations. It comes in a 260 PT, a 260 SPT, the one we've got here, and a 310 SPT. Very, very similar machines. The difference is the SPT stands for a spiral cutter, and we'll talk more about that. And the 260 versus 310 is talking about the capacity of the machines. I've gone for the 260 purely because of size. Obviously, we're working in a very small workshop here. I do want this functionality as part of my overall workflow, but it needs to fit into the workshop from a physical point of view. Now, regardless of the machine that you choose, all of these machines are 240 volt, 16 amps, and I've had a dedicated 16 amp circuit dropped into the workshop, especially for this planer. Today, we're going to unbox this, see what comes inside the kit, and put it onto its mobile base so we can move it around the workshop. Job one, let's get the packing off. So the first thing to note is this thing comes incredibly well protected. So you saw the wooden case that it came on, all made of plywood, sitting on a pallet at the bottom and it's screwed to the pallet so there's no way this is gonna move around. It's then got appropriate bits of polystyrene protecting it from banging and wobbling and the entire thing is coated in an oil to stop it rusting. Axminster to service on delivery as always is phenomenal. This was part of their heavy machines delivery service. It came in about five days from initial ordering. The process is really simple. You order your device, the heavy machines division get in touch with you and ask you about where it's been delivered to, access steps, so on and so forth. And from that, they then agree a delivery date with you. They get in touch before it comes to let you know roughly what time you're, you're coming. So I knew it was gonna arrive on a back end of a Monday afternoon. And then the delivery van turns up at your property and a very, very helpful delivery man puts it where you want it to be. This is a heavy device, comes in around 212 kilograms. So you're not really going to roam it around much. I can just about lift one end if I concentrate. Um, but overall, yeah, good service, well packed, happy days. Let's get the plastic off. So we then got this plastic membrane on top of the cast iron tables here, and again, a layer of oil. So we'll leave that for the time being. We've got a box of goodies. Let's see what's in here. Hmm, okay. No idea what that piece is for. Oh, push block. Get quite a collection of push blocks now. Another push block. All good stuff. A couple of mounts, I think they're storage for the um, fence. Looks like a blade guard. Ooh, that looks like a fence support. Solid piece of kit, that, very heavy. A bag with some tools inside it, no doubt for assembly. An emergency stop guard. A little bit more of the fence construction, again very heavy, very solid. And a couple of Allen keys, hex keys. Excellent stuff. 
and now I've got an empty box. So I'll just put those bits back in the box for safekeeping. We'll look at those when we come to setup. Hiding away down inside here, looks like we've got the fence and it's tied on with a piece of rope. So if you like rope, you've got some spare rope. Um, tied on at both ends. Looks like in order to get the fence out, we're going to have to lift up these tables. So let's see if we can work that out. Just taking off the oily piece of plastic. It's going to get messy now, I hate mess. Ugh. Lift this one up. It's these handles here that allow me to lift these tables, just simply slide them back and it unlocks and then that table lifts up out the way. I'll show you this later on but I'm just moving the dust guard out of the way and now I can get access to this fence. Also pretty heavy. Also well protected in plastic and covered in oil. I'm not going to unpack that yet. We'll leave that until we're ready for it. Now I can get this cardboard out of the way. Hopefully you can see this, there's a bit more plastic down here, again with this bed, another cast iron bed, coated in oil. Ooh, man, it's exciting. And that's it, that's the thing unpacked. Now I've also bought the recommended Axminster mobile base. So what I want to do now is quickly look at the mobile base. We'll get that set up and we'll try and move this from the pallet to the mobile base. Once we've got that done, we can quickly look at the other side of this and look at some of the features of the planer. Let's give that a go. So this is the mobile base kit that Axminster recommend for the planer jointer. It's pretty substantial. It's all made out of tubular steel and it comes with this not very comprehensive instruction manual. In the kit you get two of these swiveling casters and you get two fixed casters. You get two front brackets where the swiveling casters go and two back brackets where your fixed casters go. You get two short tubular steel extenders and a couple of long tubular steel extenders and they obviously dictate how wide or long this space is going to be. A bag of nuts and bolts and as I say, these are rather rubbish instructions, but I don't think that this is really going to be that hard. First thing we'll do, we'll put the casters onto the base. So the casters only fit into there one way round, which is obviously quite useful. To make it easy for us, in that bag of nuts there's only three components. A long bolt, a short bolt and a nut. The long bolt are what we're looking for. These are the 5 sixteenths, three quarters of an inch, and there's eight of those in the kit. These shorter ones are the 5 sixteenths, half inch, and there's 16 of those in the kit. And then these are the nuts we're looking for, the flange nuts they're called, 5 sixteenths, and there's eight of those. So we want for this assembly the long bolt and the nut. Now it's interesting that these are all in Imperial, so Axminster is an English company based in Axminster in the UK and they have branches and chains all out the UK but the instructions are all in Imperial so it probably shows it's not made here in the UK so if you try to translate 5 sixteenths it's 12 mil so this is simply a matter of putting on the nuts and bolts so this frame here that we're building now is really sturdy it's actually rated to 450 kilograms so obviously more than double the weight of our box joint to planer, which is obviously a good thing. The next thing, I guess, is I'm gonna put the back casters on to these two rear assemblies here. So for this we're going to need 16, 11, and 12. 16 is a washer, so they must be on here somewhere, I guess. Now although the kit here says I need a M8 washer, and there should be two of those, there aren't any washers in the kit. But what I am noticing instead, there's a large barrel and that barrel fits into the inside of the wheel. I think that's been an upgrade at some point and the instructions haven't been upgraded either. And that barrel does actually poke out on one side of the wheel. So I think that's going to replace the washer. The idea of course, it gives the wheel a spindle to run round and that spindle is held firm between these faces on the overall bracket. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. That's my theory. So I think we just drop this in, put the bolt on, 
and tighten it down. Now just to be helpful, these are a bigger size nut. These are 3 8 not 5 16 So I'm going to use my adjustable spanner to just take that into position. Okay. So these are what's known as a support tubes, and there's two sets here. Now obviously, this base is not dedicated to the planar jointer. It's a universal base, so it will work on many, many tools. You know, some tools are wider, some are longer. So I think the sensible thing to do is to pick the pair of these that make most sense for our application. Now, I've measured the footprint on my planar jointer, and I need an inside length here of 630 millimeters. Now if I use these longer tubes on this set of holes here, my theory goes I'll get more support along the bracket from this area here and that's going to give me an internal thickness of 641. So that's going to give me about a 10 millimeter clearance on either end and that feels good as we start to put this thing together. So that's what I personally am going to go with. No guarantee that's right, but logic would say that's a pretty good idea. So we're going to do that. So I'm tightening these down really quite firmly. I don't think it's going to slip, but I just want to make sure everything's looking good. And give ourselves every chance of surviving. After all, it's quite a lot of weight in this planar jointer. Good. And now I want to repeat the activity for the width. Now the width needs to be 440. 40 millimeters. So I put the final brackets together and bolted the frame and that's the assembly done. I then took the mobile base and placed that down next to the planar jointer. There's then two black clips, one on the left hand side here and another black clip, similar place but on the right hand side. Remove both of those, they simply unscrew the Phillips screwdriver. Then a case of carefully manhandling the planar jointer to put it in position on top of the mobile base. Recommended, get a friend to help you, this was heavy. Once that's done, I can now move it around and it's all looking pretty good. Still covered in grease at this point, so I decided now's a good time to clean it. So I got hold of my Excalibur blade and bit cleaner. I could also have equally used some rubbing alcohol here. Spray it on the surfaces with the grease and carefully rub it off. At that point, that was it. That was job done. And that's all for today's video. Next time, we'll look at the assembly, bringing all the things together. Thanks for watching. See you soon.